So today we're talking about the top five tips to get your newborn sleeping well. As maternity care providers, we see lots of new parents coming in all the time, exhausted and overwhelmed with this sweet little baby who has come into their lives and disrupted one of the most important things we have to keep us healthy, sleep. The first one to two months with your new baby is such an amazing time, but without the right tools and knowledge, it can be super challenging as well. We know as physicians how important sleep is to both us and our babies. So today we wanna to talk about the top five tips to get your newborn sleeping well right off the bat. So if you like topics about prenatal, postpartum, newborn sleep, labor delivery and breastfeeding, check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca. We're also on Instagram at she.found.health. Please have a look at our disclaimers below and everything we mentioned in this video we'll link to in the show notes below. So tip number one, the most important thing you can do is understand and know what is normal for newborn sleep. Newborn sleep on average between 16 to 19 hours in a 24 period. That's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. It sure is, but often the problem is that it doesn't always happen as the at the same time as we're sleeping, which is where the issues really start. It also doesn't happen all at once. Nope. So one of the first problems is that babies often have their days and nights reversed and sleep when they're on the outside, just like they did on the inside. So when they were inside of you and were throughout the day walking, we're rocking them back and forth to sleep. So they would spend most of the day sleeping inside you. Then when you're lying down for a good night's sleep, you start to feel them moving around. And that's when they wake up and start partying. Mm -hmm. Remember those days? So just like for us as adults, it takes time to make change. The same thing happens to babies. And part of what we want to talk about in this episode is how to start doing that. So it's important to understand how babies sleep. They have two main types of sleep. The first type is REM sleep, not the band, rapid eye movement. And this is where they spend most of their time. Non-REM sleep can either be light or deep sleep. Babies are often transitioning from one type of sleep to another quite frequently. And sometimes when they're doing this, they, also, they almost appear to be waking up and startling themselves out of their sleep. Most babies also don't sleep through the night until at least four months of age. And when we say sleeping through the night, we don't mean 12 hours, mm. right? Often we mean six to eight hours. But even in these early days, they need to feed super frequently. So the most important thing you can do is understand their two phases of being awake. When they first wake up, they're sort of in this quiet um, alert phase. So they're quiet and observing the environment around them. If you can feed them during this phase, that's ideal. Because once they move out of this phase, they pass into the crying phase. When they seem more erratic and you guessed it, they're crying. Yep. So this is the time where they need you to help soothe them. And so now that you know what's normal, the next thing we should talk about is how we can help our babies to sleep better. So tip number two is recognizing the signs of sleepiness in your baby. So babies have a really sweet spot for sleeping and for feeding. So like Dr. Sarah said, if we can feed them during that quiet alert phase, they often feed more effectively. They're less fussy, easier to latch. And then they kind of go into that crying upset phase. Um, and most babies have about a 60 to 90 minute window of being awake prior to their next nap. And so recognizing when they're starting to become sleepy for that next nap is really important because that again is the sweet spot for getting them to sleep effectively. So some of the early signs that we see is looking away from you, uh, maybe rubbing their eyes, rubbing their ears, pulling at their ears. That's a really early sign. The next sign would be kind of a yawning type sign. And lastly, getting fussy and getting upset. So when you're starting to notice those signs of sleepiness, that's when you wanna get their pre-nap time or pre-bedtime routine started, which we'll get to later. If you leave it too late and they get into that fussy stage, then it gets a little bit more challenged, but fear not, we have some ideas for that as well. So tip number three is swaddling. Now, we've done an episode on this, so for more information about swaddling specifically, including the evidence around it, check that episode out. We'll link to it in the show notes below. 
So swaddling by itself is not going to solve all your problems. And honestly, in fact, a lot of parents who simply try and rely on swaddling insist their babies hate it. Swaddling in terms of comforting and soothing your baby is actually part of a bigger process. And there's a physician who's very well known named Dr. Harvey Karp. He's a pediatrician and he wrote several books. The most famous one that we rely on a lot is called The Happiest Baby on the Block. And he talks about the five S's. There's also Kara from Taking Care of Babies, who does a great sleep course, and she talks about the CRIES method, C-R-I-E-S. So both of these methods are really about recreating that in utero environment and experience for your baby to help settle them. Check them out below, because this is such an important piece of information to help calm your newborn and start fostering good sleep right from the start. So. A really important piece of swaddling is actually being able to do it properly. Now, some people, like the nurses on our mother baby unit, are amazing at swaddling with blankets. But to be honest, most of us are not. I know myself and Dr. Alicia included, we're not master swaddlers. So we actually used swaddling sacks. And we'll link to a couple below if you think you might need some help figuring out how to do the perfect swaddle. Because it's really important to do a safe swaddle for your baby if you're going to swaddle them and put them down on their back to sleep. So we're wondering, do you swaddle? Have you swaddled? And if so, what did you find was really useful? Was there a particular sack that you liked or a particular type of blanket you liked? We'd love to hear your comments below. Tip number four, schedule. Now, some of us love schedules. Some of us do not. Do not. So this is a kind of a win-win for both of you because when we say schedule, we mean general guideline. No baby, no child will stick to the schedule that you make them to. Mm -hmm. But if we can start implementing that earlier, hopefully we have a fighting chance. So most babies actually have about a three to four hour window that they repeat throughout the day. So eat, play, sleep, eat, play, sleep. And that goes on and on throughout the day until it comes nighttime. So let's use that as an opportunity to create a schedule for your baby that incorporates a good feed, some good quality bonding time, and a nice nap for baby that means some self-care time for you, mama, because we all need to take care of ourselves even when we're taking care of our babies. So follow the tips we've already talked about. And once your baby wakes up and is that in that quiet active phase, make sure you take that opportunity to give them a good feed. Wake them up, take off their diapers, do a change, get them naked, do some skin to skin time with you and give them a good solid feed. After that, have a little bit of time of bonding time and play time. So that's simple stuff. Listening to music, making funny faces, tickling their toy toes. This does not have to be complicated, trust me. Mm -hmm. Then once you notice that they're starting to have those sleep readiness signs that we talked about, start that sleep routine, which we'll get to next, and then back to bed that they go. And then during that time, you can do what you need to do to be the best mom you can be. So tip number five, that sleep routine. So just like us, babies are creatures of habit. And what we want to do is start triggering them to learn how to fall asleep when they're getting sleepy. Because if they don't fall asleep then, then they get overtired and they get really hard to put down. So the best thing you can do is sit down with your partner and come up with a, a quick and simple pre-nap and pre-bedtime routine that helps train your baby to understand and know that it's time for sleep. This should be quick and simple and something that anyone that's putting your baby to sleep could do. It could be as simple as reading a book, singing a song, telling a story, that type of thing. What's really important that is that this is separate from feeding. So don't feed as part of your sleep routine. For nap time, they'll feed when they wake up, so you don't need to incorporate that. For bedtime, we recommend feeding them before you begin the sleep routine, so they don't associate feeding with sleeping. Now, part of this routine is going to be swaddling. And what is so important, and Dr. Alicia also alluded to earlier, is that when you swaddle, you put them down on their back, and you make sure that you swaddle not too tight, two fingers, and that there's lots of room for them to stretch out their legs and their hips. So part of this routine, after you've swaddled, read your story, sung your song, is that you need to put baby down on their back towards the end of the routine before they fall asleep. So this helps to teach them right off the bat not to depend on you for falling asleep. 
You don't have to leave the room. We're not talking about sleep training. We're just talking about helping them learn to fall asleep on their own. So you can be there with them, touching them, holding their belly. Just don't hold them in your arms until they fall asleep. It's interesting. I often say to people, um, babies seem to wake up when they've fallen asleep in one place and woken up in a different mm-hmm. place. They seem to be quite confused and they don't have that quiet alert phase as much. And so I say to people, well, what if you fell asleep on your couch in your living room and then somehow you woke up in your bed upstairs? That would freak me totally out, yeah. right? Yeah. Same for babies. Babies are smarter than we give them credit for. Yeah. And so that's kind of the key piece here is making sure they're falling asleep wherever they're going to sleep. And that's what we often tell moms who, you know, and I'm guilty of this from time to time, feeding your baby to sleep. When they wake up, they're going to want to feed again to fall back asleep. Mm -hmm. And that's why some moms who wonder why when my baby's six months old is still feeding every two hours because they associate sleep with feeding. That's how they've learned to go to sleep. And that's one of our, you know, top mistakes that we make when we're feeding our newborns. So if you're interested in the other top five mistakes that we make when we're breastfeeding, check out the link below and there's a free handout and a guide to how to fix those mistakes. So we all need help learning to teach our newborns how to sleep and how to figure that out. I know I did with my first. Mm-hmm. My second, I had figured it out a little bit, but my first was a much bigger challenge. So we encourage you to learn a little bit more about this when you're still pregnant. So Harvey Karp's book, The Happiest Baby on the Block, or Cara's um, sleep course is great. And you can read them or do the course before you have your baby and then do it afterwards just to remind yourself. And certainly the Taking Cara Baby course you can listen to while you're breastfeeding your baby which is a very efficient use Mm -hmm, of time. mm -hmm. So we hope that you found this to be a useful topic. Um, Please check out our website, www.shefoundhealth.ca. Check out our other similar posts that we've got right here for you. And take care of yourself.